Hi, I'm Marco Rubio. I'm honored to be your senator here in Washington, D.C. Thank you for that opportunity, and welcome to this week's edition of Constituent Mailbox. As you know, every week we go through our emails and letters, and we pick out a few that are topical, that are hot, you know, that we're hearing from a lot of people about. We pick two or three, we read them on the air, we answer your questions, so we encourage you to write us. This week I decided I'd focus on just one issue, because there's so much attention being paid to a recent ruling by the Obama administration with regards to contraception and the Catholic Church. There's some misunderstanding about it, and there's some upset people about it. I filed a bill to deal with it directly, because I believe so strongly in the constitutional principles that are involved. So I picked two letters from this week's mailbox, different points of view, and I'll address both of them together, because it kind of outlines the kinds of things we're hearing from people all across our state. The first is an email. It comes from Ted, who, reads, who, who lives in Newport Ritchie, and he writes, Your bill, which subjects all employees to Catholic religious tenets, is an appalling affront to the rights of workers. Like it or not, the right to contraception is a necessary right in today's world. Your bill would deny employees contraceptive coverage if they work for any religiously affiliated agency, and that's wrong. Stop behaving as if all your constituents are servants to religion and allow the Affordable Health Care Act to work as it's intended. Well, Ted, it's, what you wrote is not actually accurate. First, you write that your bill would subject all employees to Catholic, Catholic religious tenants, and you write that it would deny employees contraceptive coverage if they work for a religiously affiliated agency. Well, that's not true. And nothing in this bill would prohibit an agency from offering it. If the Catholic Church decides to offer insurance that provides contraception, they can. But this has nothing to do with religious teachings or contraception. This has to do with a fundamental right that's, con that's found in the First Amendment. It's very simple. The First Amendment says all of us have the right to express ourselves religiously. And that means there may be some religions that do things you don't agree with. But in America, the right to believe these things is constitutionally protected. Now you have the federal government stepping in and saying, we are going to use the power of the federal government to force you to pay for something that you teach your followers is not wise or that you teach your followers is wrong. And that violates that religious principle. If you make faith-based organizations have to pay for something that violates their religious beliefs, you are violating their First Amendment right. So let's be very clear. An employee of a Catholic hospital, for example, they can buy contraception on their own. And if the Catholic Church or the hospital decides to offer it, they can. This bill doesn't prohibit it. This bill doesn't outlaw contraception. All it says is that the federal government cannot force a religion that teaches that contraception is wrong from being forced to pay for contraception for their employees. And that's, a re that's not a religious principle or a conservative principle. That's a constitutional one. And if we start violating the Constitution against people we don't agree with, one day they'll violate the things we believe in. I got another email. This one comes from David in Orlando, and he writes, I'm writing to express my disagreement with a recent HHS ruling requiring religious institutions to provide birth control via the health care plans. This seems to be a clear violation of the right to act upon sincerely held religious beliefs and an example of the federal government replacing a religious moral standard with their own moral standard. In fact, I personally do not agree with the Catholic Church's teaching on birth control, but I staunchly defend their right to hold this view and to act upon it. Please note my opposition to your decision. Well, David, that's precisely what we believe, and that's why we filed the bill that we filed. Again, it has nothing to do with contraception. It has to do with the constitutional right that's protected under the First Amendment of our Constitution. And as I said earlier, if you start to allow those to be violated against people we don't agree with, one day they may violate the things you, you believe in. And so the Constitution applies to everybody. Now, there's been talk earlier this week that maybe the Obama administration would find some middle ground but here's the problem with that. Compromise is always good, but there's no way to provide someone half their constitutional rights. They either have their constitutional rights or you're violating their constitutional rights. So here's what I hope will happen. Instead of having to pass a bill, although I've offered one, my hope is that instead the Obama administration will just reconsider. They'll say that they've heard from a lot of people around our country and they've reconsidered their decision and have decided to respect the constitutional rights of religious organizations that have certain teachings. That would be the best outcome for everybody. This doesn't have to be a partisan issue, Republican versus Democrat. In fact, a number of liberal commentators have written in opposition to this decision, and an increasing number of Democratic leaders across the country are urging the president to reconsider the decision he has made. I hope that's what he'll do. Well, that was the issue of the week, and so I wanted to focus on it, but I appreciate all the emails and letters that we're getting. We're entering the budget season where we'll have to make some decisions about how to spell, spend federal monies. There's a lot of stuff happening around the world, whether it's the instability in Egypt or what's happening in Syria. So keep writing us and emailing us, and who knows? 
Maybe next week one of your emails or letters will be the one we read on the air. I want to thank you again for the extraordinary honor it is of serving you and being your voice here in the United States Senate. I'm reminded every day who I work for and how few people have ever had this opportunity. It's an obligation I take seriously and a responsibility that I cherish. I thank you so much for your support, for your encouragement, for your opinions. Keep writing us. Thank you. May God bless Florida, and may God always bless the United States.